we going to talk about some of these leaks? Yes, yeah, so we're going to go over the leak conversation. And the first one, and this is a big uh, a big one, and, and, and this will be its own video. So, hey, welcome to the Own Cast. I'm your host, Alex Kessler. Here's Ben Bateman. We do video content every day sometimes. And also, uh, we do a video podcast version of this. So you can listen to the audio anytime you want. Check out our Patreon, all those good things. Please like and subscribe. And uh, basically... Um, a bunch of cards were leaked. There was like a bunch of leaks and, 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 and then there's a discourse about leaks and I kind of want to delve into it. So, uh, first off, we're going to talk at first about what our thoughts are on leaking and, and about content creators making content about those leaks and, and the, the do's and don'ts in that world. And then we're going to talk about some of the specific leaks that we saw. Uh, this is coming out after Kaldheim uh, preview season is starting. So, so last Thursday was the kickoff. So it's possible that all these leaks are now just excuse me, public information that that are, are, are officially released. We still want to be careful because we're recording this a week ahead of time. So a uh, big spoiler warning in about five minutes uh, when we get into uh, individual cards. I'll bring it up again. Um, so uh, we don't know exactly what happened. People said they opened them in packs, but uh, uh, about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, like eight cards were, were leaked ahead of time. And... Um, and then it kind of got into a weird, an interesting conversation because, um, you know, there, there, the for the last kind of couple of years has been like a hard do not spoil leaks, right? Like that's 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 like like content creators that's don't talk the about them, stance. don't don't yeah. share them, like don't put them on the internet. And we even created like there's a video on our channel right now, and it's a joke, uh, but it was like it was like the leaks from because there was this be- ri- res- or there was leaks for um, um, Commander Legends that came out like two months in advance, and I I released a video that was just me like don't share leaks. I was dressed in a dinosaur costume because it was during October when I was dressing as a costume every day, and then it's a video of water leaking from a faucet and our theme song just playing on loop because people have been asking us just to post our theme song on loop. Uh, on our on our <laughs> channel because it slaps apparently copyright. <laughs> Not just. Um, and so uh, they um, but there's like a real kind of conversation on 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 is it okay for content creators to share leaks, talk about them, share them? What, is it okay for people to share them? And where do kind of people stand on it? And and I have I go I go on two sides, right? Right. The 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 negative to sharing leaks is to other content creators. Like the, there is a real incentive um, that Wizards has created of content creators getting to share preview cards, right? Like it's it, it's one of the reasons you do it, especially in the early days when we started making content, like literally getting our first preview card was like the goal. I like made all of top decking. I did all of this other stuff. We had the podcast and it was like, I just want to get a preview card one day. Like how, what do I do have to get it? And getting it meant a lot. And like getting the preview cast two times is one of the better things that I've done in my life. <laughs> um, and, and, and something I definitely hang my hat on. So like, and if someone had leaked Kess before I got to preview it, it would have been heartbreaking. If someone leaked a card that was supposed to be my first preview card, it would have been heartbreaking uh, ahead of time. And I find out that that's the one I was supposed to get now. So, so that's, that's kind of the, like, you know, there's a lot of people doing a lot of work for basically no money, right? Most of these content creators, including us don't get paid to do this. There's there like the money that we, yeah. we, I'm definitely net negative on the MM cast as are many other content creators and they're doing it cause they love it. Um, or maybe with the, the hopes of going to eventually make a living off of it. And, and so this real incentive that's been created sucks. Uh, it's super, super lame. Um, and then on top of that, there is a, a pretty large subset of people that don't want to see leaks if they can avoid it. Right. I, I did a poll, on Twitter and it was almost exactly 50 50 um, on do, did you go and look at the leaks? Like when you found out there were leaks, did you go and, and, and search them out? And like 50% of people said, absolutely not. And 50% of people said yes. And, and like, I think there's just a group of people that wants to see them officially. They want to see the release schedule in the same way that like, I don't look up the ending to movies before I go see them. Well, it's funny you relate this. So what this brings to mind for me, and it's a little different because it's this is information that's not supposed to be out there. The people that dole out the information have chosen not to, but it gets out anyway. But I remember like when when uh, Andrew Guy and I uh, reviewed Rise of Skywalker, we we screened the movie. We went and saw the whatever the press screening for it two days before it came out. And there was an embargo. So you weren't supposed to talk about the movie until it came out. And there was two schools of thought. Our original plan was to do a midnight the 1201 30 minute spoiler review we were going to do like a full live stream spoiler review right because we were like you know with like 
we'll we'll put it on the screen spoiler review in the title but we want to do that and i i posted we were going to do it and i got messages from a bunch of other people you know more major digital media houses being like don't do that man that's like you shouldn't you shouldn't do a spoiler review at 1201 that's like not a good thing to do no one has seen the movie yet and we didn't end up doing it we did like a pulled our punches one and it kind of i got a big argument with andrew about it remember what had happened because we like pivoted last minute so I just got like cold feet about it. It made me feel weird to be going out there because there was this like frowned upon idea of it. And it's kind of the same thing you're talking about, even though it's still we're allowed to talk about it on the embargo date. But it's still that sort of respect of like the world really wants to watch this movie and then talk about it. They don't really want you to spoil the ending before they have even a chance to talk about it. That's not really the point for them. But I just remember thinking at the time and we should have just done that. You know, maybe maybe we should have just been the people that did that because someone was going to do it. Right. And that's right, kind of right, that's right. kind of the same thing with this, which is like it gets spoiled. Everyone sees it. Someone's going to post this and get a bunch of credit for breaking it. Luckily, we're not the type of creators that do that. But someone is right, and someone's right. profiting off. It. And there's a there's another side of it, right? Like there is if we were more and we have tailored ourselves at different times to being finance related, right? We have MTG finance takes. We've had Cassie has been on who's been, you know, did did the MTG finance article for SCG for years. We've had multiple brainstorm brewery guys on here. Um, these cards will come out and will automatically affect prices. Like for instance, one of the things that was leaked was snow coming back. And literally if you go and look at mid-tier or just on the edge powerful snow cards for Modern Horizons, they have an uptick the day after these preview cards come out in price because people realize like, oh, that Merrill Legion enchantment might actually start seeing play or Dead of Winter or, you know, like now more, more and more incentives to play snow have been created. What of these cards maybe are going to be worth buying again? And like by, by not paying attention to leaks or by closing your eyes, you a miss out on the chance to buy cards before they spike, uh, before the MTG finance community gets in there and starts messing with your ability to pick up cards for a sweet deck you want to build. Um, and B maybe lose out on selling cards out if there's like a reprint, right? Like you like, Oh, I didn't look at the leaks in ancient or, uh, 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 what's that? What's that one? The, the, or fetch lands, right? Or like shock lands, shock lands are being reprinted again, or fetch lands are being reprinted. And because there was a leak, if I had known week one, I would have sold them very, very quickly. But, sure. but because I wasn't looking at leaks, they've already tanked and I never had a chance to jump off the boat. Um, so it's like, from that perspective, you now no longer you're 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 actively hurting pe yourself by not looking at leaks, which sucks because like, you don't want to. And especially with these, the leaks that we have, one of them is an insane spoiler, like it, it, like to the extent that I didn't believe it, even though like everyone at that point was like, no, these are real. <laughs> um, and we'll get into that in a second. But so it, it sucks. There's, you know, on one hand, as you said, it sucks that like there's going to be content creators that are lame that like are going to take advantage of it. So leaving content creators that are not lame that won't take advantage of it. And often that's the line between a lot of people that get preview cards and don't right? like wizards doesn't want these leaks being shared. So if you're one of the good right. ones, you have a higher chance of getting a preview card, which means that like you're now getting less of an incentive. Um, and then there's a whole conversation on, on, the value of a preview card and, and yeah. uh, spice eight rack did a really good kind of breakdown on Twitter on like in many ways, wizards is paying you for free labor for a free preview card. And once you're a certain side preview videos don't necessarily do much better for you than not. And one of the reasons I'm like, you know, we don't get preview cards any set. And, and part of the reason wizards did that. And I think it's a good thing is it it's, they're now putting preview cards in newer creator hands that, that to, to try and dry eyeballs to more and more creators, which I think is really good. But in other ways they're, you know, they're getting free labor for, for, for content to advertise their new set. Uh, without having to pay anyone. So th there's like a weird love, love, hate relationship that I know some content creators have with the preview card model as it exists now. But when it comes to leaks, it sucks. And, and, and there's not like a good solution. I think I think what you were saying with your stream is the right thing to do. Movies are different too, right? Like the the yeah. the value of a movie is a story being told and not seeing the ending of it. And Star Wars specifically is all about secret reveals, right? Like Darth Vader being Luke's father is like what the franchise is built on. <laughs> uh, and so spoilers are a real, real thing there. Where magic, like, yes, we're going to find out tomorrow that this is true and what the context is of it. The main thing is gameplay. Um, and, and you're not going to get to do that until you get to play with them. So it's not as big of a deal. Well, you know, what, what calls to mind really quickly too, and, and we're going to talk about this, I think this green spoiler here first. What's hilarious to me is you guys were all on our MMCast text thread, you know, Marshall, our producer, you and me and Michael were all texting and, and you guys were like, oh my God, don't look at this. If you don't want to have something huge, I mean, this is like massive, earth shattering. And I was like, wow, like, what could it be? I was thinking to myself, I was like, 
uh, it must be like the reserve list is being abolished or like something. I was like something just game changing with the way these guys are talking about it. And I like saw what it was and I was like, ah! care about story <laughs> i was like, I don't care about this story. Yeah, I was yeah, like it's, it's purely a story spoiler it's a big story spoiler but it's if you don't care it doesn't matter like, you guys were like don't look and i was like wow this is gonna be mind-blowing i can't believe that we're like magic is ending in 2022 or something like this is gonna be wild stuff they did they did preview like every mechanic in the set right we got foretold yeah. we got snow <laughs> we got the the other which i'm never gonna remember the name of and it already feels like the adamant of this set uh boast but I think the correct thing to do is, is I think people should talk about them. I, I've kind of come around on it. I think you should do videos about leaks. I, I don't think the leaks should be in your, especially when they're story related, they definitely shouldn't be in your thumbnail. You should encourage people to, to, to not just share them blatantly. You should put them behind spoiler walls. You should be cognizant that there's a, a significant 50% of the, of at least my followers, which is not everyone. They didn't want to see it, right? Like, so, so why, why hurt other people by sharing those spoilers? For the people that do want to know, for people that want to find out, and for people that want to maybe protect themselves on the finance side, I do think like once the cat's out of the bag, the cat's out of the bag. So it's really more about just making sure you don't hurt the people that don't want to see it. In the same way that I don't post on Twitter, the ending to Mandalorian season season eight, just blatantly. Um, we are going to get to the spoiler, yep. spoiler in question sections. here. From this point onward, do not watch. If you do not want to see the cards that were leaked, the big one, the one that we were all freaking out about, the thing that like ruins the story by seeing it is <laughs> Vornaclix Monstrous Raider. Four green green, Phyrexian Praetor. Praetor is a creature type. Trample haste six six. You get doubling season and they get reverse doubling season. Wait a minute. It's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so it's a six it's a six mana six six with trample. Haste. And that haste. gives in haste and it's it's you or one or more counters on you or on a permanent or player put that many if you would put one or more counters on a permanent or player put twice that many of each of those kinds of counters that permanent or player instead so that includes so, planeswalkers that includes infect that includes energy that includes but you said doubling counters. season it is it is not doubling season that is doubling it's season. doubling season for counters Oh, yeah, you don't get tokens. It is not tokens. Yeah, You're, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, 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 I, I sorry. I thought for a second that I misread the, the card. Yeah, sorry. so it's so it's doubling season for Planeswalkers, and it's doubling season for Infect, which obviously, because of where Vorinclex is originally from, uh, with the whole Infect thing, that's an important piece of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then the other half is if an opponent would put uh, one or more counters on a permanent or player, then put half that many counters on that permanent player instead, rounded down. So what's cool about him as a card is... It's the part of doubling season that they've previously said makes it not a card they can reprint. It lets you ultimate with Planeswalkers the turn they come into play. Now, one of the reasons I think they've been able to print this is so many of the Planeswalkers they're now designing don't ultimate anymore. Or like their ultimates are not like, I win the game for five loyalty, right? So it's not as yeah. as insane, at least in standard. And like doubling season hasn't done anything in modern of significance ever. Um, though fun decks exist. Uh, uh, so, so I think from that perspective, it's fine. This card's dope. It's really so. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's great. Like the fact that six mana six six for trample haste by itself is like a card that would be looked at for standard play, and the fact that it has like half of doubling season attached, and then makes all of your opponents planeswalkers way worse. It's like it's really sweet. Now, do you know what's something I would like to do in modern? Yes, I would like to. Uh, I would like to tooth and nail, <laughs> and twined for this card and uh, putrefax. Is that it? The the five three trample haste infect sack yes. end of turn card. Yes. I would like to get the two of those together <laughs> off of my tooth and nail. I would like to one shot you with haste and just 10 you. I would really love to know how trample works with this ability and in fact. Oh, interesting. Cause of the counters do the count since it, cause it's doing double damage. It's damage isn't double. So it's doing five damage trampling, but does the counters, the minus one, minus one counters, which is getting two per damage double, yeah. right? Like, I have no idea how that works. But Kill the creature faster and then, they, and then the damage going but through. Does, it, does the trample damage go farther through? So if you like, if you block with a zero yeah. five, does ten, five damage still go over because it doubled that damage or does it just do put 10 counters on the creature? So in the comments, please comment. It's an interesting question. Yep. Um, but story wise, what does Vornaclux mean and why it's important? So, so as you know, uh, if you're not a planeswalker, traveling to other planes is real, real hard. Uh, currently in canon, the only way that we know of that's really around 
are Nicol Bolas's portal that uh, Rashmi, I believe, built on. You just keep going. I'll be uh, right back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that Rashmi built on. Well, I need you to know this. <laughs> uh, that Rashmi built on Kaladesh uh, that then Tezzeret absorbed and then used to open up a portal, which is how the army of uh, from not Ixalan, Amonkhet the, of Eternals was able to travel through. But only dead people could use that portal to travel through. Uh, I believe that there is also one or two other planeswalkers kind of can teleport other people. I think Kaya has the ability to do it to some extent. And I also believe, but you have to like be turned into a ghost or be dead. And then obviously, uh, uh, what's his face can have Mo Wu, um, join him wherever he goes. Yang Wu, I think, uh, don't quote me on that somehow. Now, Ben, I do need Ben to come back. This isn't fun. Somehow, Vorniclux <laughs> uh, is on this plane. And how did that happen? My personal theory is that there's three options. One is, Venser is a portal mage who is working on an interplanar portal, and I believe in his journal that exists, which could, is also with his dead body. Dying on New Phyrexia, not really a thing. Uh, very easy for him to just be completed and be brought back to life. He could be creating portals, which is leading us into the Phyrexian story. Um, option two is the story of Kaldheim seems to be about this world tree uh, bringing together multiple realms. This is like how like in the Avengers... Uh, all the portals of uh, from the tree are bringing stuff together and maybe just like whatever that process is, uh, Cal time has like bled into new Phyrexia to some extent. Um, or the third option is that Tybalt getting the sword that is on the backside of Halvar has allowed him to open up portals uh, using his Planeswalker Spark because because there is that realm thing. So something is able to do that. So <laughs> Tybalt just open up a portal with the sword and Vornoclex is there. So, so to catch, I mean, I think, I think as far as that, no, I have been able to hear you the whole time. I think, um, I think that truthfully having a super sweet, powerful Tybalt card would be awesome. So Mm -hmm. that would be cool if that was the case. Yeah, so like we know Tibble's there. We know Tibble's whole plot is he's trying to steal the sword that Halwar is holding. In fact, the one reason I think that the other gods might not be equipment is two parts. One, he cares about equipment and B, uh, because uh, like the sword, this sword specifically is the one in the trailer. It's not like there's like other weapons that you're seeing. So it's not like the other gods are unified to weapons in any way. So it, it feels like this will be the one that he's in equipment. So this is why you like story because it lets you predict what type of cards are going to exist. And then, <laughs> and then the story is about, is about Tybalt stealing the sword. So like, and there's like a bunch of weird, like crystally like light things in the sky in a lot of the artwork and the, the okay. pathway lands, uh, all the flavor text make reference of like, portal or like being able to travel between worlds or whatever and then you know in norse mythology like thor is the god of the nine realms and he uses the bifrost to travel through all of the cow or our our plane or whatever and like yeah that could be planeswalkery adjacent magic and like maybe in the hands of a planeswalker tibble could just like snatch up people and bring them over yeah and like yeah yeah i don't know if you've ever played against uh vorniclex in a game of commander ben but uh it sucks is vor (laughs) If Warnclex is the one where your stuff comes in tapped, no, no that's all, Urbrask. All no. lands, if you tap them for mana, do not untap for on your next untap yes. step. And all of your He's, lands untap for double. He costs like 10 or something. Eight. Nine. He costs eight. He, he's like, he was not a standard player, hasn't seen play. Like, he is a, in commander, he sees play because he is honestly unbearable to, like, he, he like wins the person in the game, right? He doubles your mana it, and every other person's mana is halved. It's interesting that all of the Praetors have had their own moments, like uh, both Jenga Taxis for a minute there before things got crazy with Power Creep was the best thing you could be reanimating. Right. And then Vorinclex, it was the was the odd the odd one out, whereas Elish Norn was the biggest staple of like limited and then like, you know, big part of like competitive play because it was just like such a good thing El- to El- get off. Elish Norn has seen so much competitive play over time, like is probably yeah. the most <laughs> most competitively successful. Yeah, by far. And then Ourobrask is really sweet because Ourobrask, like the fact that it's just like a four four with haste for five that like gives the your rest of your board haste, and then also your opponent's creatures all come and tap. It's like pretty utility. It's just a good card in general. It's a lot less splashy than the others. Yeah, like Elish, I Elishorn think, is Elishorn is like like Vorniclex, Urbrask, and uh uh the black one. Shieldred. Shieldred are all commander staples, right? Like, and, yeah. and like all of them are. And Elishnorn's also a commander staple. Um, G- Jin Gitaxius and Elishnorn w- are also cards that saw significant competitive play. Just Gitaxian. Yeah. G- Jin Gitaxius got outclassed by Grizzlebrand, right? That's like the only yep. reason it's not seeing plays that like Grizzlebrand is 
the third best creature ever printed from a like if all things were costing zero mana perspective. Yeah. Mind you, Elish Norn might be the third, right? Like one of those three along with <laughs> Emrakul. <laughs> um, right, right, right. So so let's let's go to other things. So uh do you want I mean we can touch upon some of these or do you want to There's Resplendent Marshall. That card's probably pretty cool. Um it's white white one for a three three flying angel warrior. When Resplendent Marshall enters the battlefield or dies, you may exile another creature card from your graveyard. When you do put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control other than Resplendent Marshall that shares a creature type with the exiled card. Um just make something real big. Well, no, it's put a plus one plus one counter on each creature you control mm. other than the Marshal that shares right. a creature type with the exiled card. So it's it's kind of an interesting Lord card. Like, it's a, first of all, it's a warrior. And, and there are definitely warrior decks that are like, you can, you can almost just play a warrior deck at this point. There's like a handful of Lords now. Um, the fact that this is a 3-3 three, three flying warrior Lord that comes down, exiles whatever trash was in your graveyard, and then... Plus ones, plus ones, your whole board. Yeah, that's it's true. Reminiscent of some of the stuff. It's, it's reminiscent of some of the stuff that humans does by like making your whole board bigger. Yep. Um, and it's also because they're counters. It doesn't require this creature to stay on the battlefield. Much in the same way that like Thalia's lieutenant gets bigger. There's like the red warrior lord that can make like the 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 two drop. There's like some good warrior tribal stuff that was in in Zendikar, so it does play on that. That's fair. Um, yeah, that card's really cool. Um, last thing on this card, sorry, just because I think there is actually one last piece of this puzzle. So this card is when it enters the battlefield or dies. So yes. you get it both times. Um, and also, the creature that you're exiling doesn't have to be share type with Resplendent Angel. It just has to share a creature type with the creatures that are getting the counters. Hmm. This could literally just be in humans. You just exile a dead Thalia's lieutenant when it, enter- when it enters. I mean, right? Like it just exiles a dead human and pluses your whole board. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If, if they're all humans that card's pretty powerful that yeah, card's yeah. a pretty that's, that's a pretty strong top end in a lot of tribal decks you yeah, can play it in, in spirits like yeah and it's a flying three yeah. three for three like that's seen play right in in older format so now it has a good ability um yep we have dragonkin berserker one in a red uh human berserker two two First strike, boast abilities you activate cost one less to activate for each dragon you control and then it has boast four in a red colon which boast is uh activate this ability only if creatures attack this turn and only once each turn so you can activate it once a turn if you've attacked with a creature to create a five five red dragon creature token with flying so it's cool because without dragon tribal this scales like every dragon you cost makes it so the next dragon is cheaper um and then obviously if you have a bunch of dragons in your deck you're putting this in a sarkon deck it just is a sweet dragon token maker as long as you're attacking um and then also a boast boast tribal for other boast cards there's another boast arnie broken bow two and a red legendary creature human berserker three three haste boast one you may change uh arnie's base power to one plus the greatest power among other creatures you control until end of turn so if you have like a seven seven you can make him into a seven seven you can you know you can you can choose to make him bigger um you know what you know where this card would be really fun Dragonkin Berserker in a deck alongside uh, Bolas, four mana flying to transform into a Planeswalker Bolas with Training Grounds, um, where you are like, because obviously I've, I've mentioned to you before that Bolas comes down on four, and if you have Training Grounds, then he flips himself on turn five with Training Grounds because it makes his flip cost five instead of seven, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, which is already sweet. And then the fact that this card with the Training Grounds means that for three mana already, you're just going to be making potentially two if you have any dragons and mm. if you create a dragon then the next time it costs two to activate the boast ability um that seems really fun that seems like su- you're and talking about the berserker rat. yeah 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 that's that's cool pack rat's Throw good too pack rat as well the training grounds it's insanely good mm-hmm. urborg so you can get all the black mana so you can activate pack rat a lot of times um that all sounds real sweet <laughs> yeah that's cool i like that um Runeforge Champion. When Runeforge Champion enters the battlefield, you may search your library and or graveyard for a rune card, reveal it, and put it into your hand. If you search your library that way, shuffle it. You may pay one other than pay the mana cost for rune spells you cast. We don't know what that is. Do we know what runes are yet? Yeah, we don't know what those are yet. I guess that was a mechanic we missed when we went over mechanics. Runes are in this set. Uh, Let us know what you think, because you've seen them and we haven't. The only runes I can think of were Rune of Protection. These were all from Urza's Saga. They were cycling... They were cycling circle of protections. 
This seems like um, a, this seems like a card type. This seems like an arcane yeah. or yeah. <laughs> agreed. Uh, agreed. We have the snow spell, blessing of frost, three and a green, uh, snow sorcery. Distribute X plus one plus one counters among any number of creatures you control, where X is the amount of snow spent to cast this spell. Then draw a card for each creature you control with power greater, uh, power four or greater. So this is just a pump your whole team, draw a bunch of cards. If you were playing snow mana, not an exciting rare going to be dope and limited you're going to blow people out it's an overrun uh but also it was what confirmed snow is in the set uh sigil god favored one one white or Seagrid god favored legendary creature human warrior flash first strike protection from god creatures when Seagrid god mm. favored enters the battlefield exile up to one target attacking or blocking creature until Seagrid leaves the battlefield Uh, yeah. it's like a cool O-ring with pro gods, uh, righteous Valkyrie, two and a white, uh, two, four flying when another angel or cleric enters the battle from your control, you gain life equal to that creature's toughness. As long as you have at least seven life or more than your starting loaf title creatures control, get plus two, plus two. This was one of the cards that made, there's a bunch of angel travel cards that jumped up because this card was previewed, um, yeah. or, or leaked. That's like when we were talking about finance things and was relevant. It's like. It's cool. It's cute. There's like some other angel travel card in that buy box. And those those are those are the leech cards. Um, obviously, Vorniclux was the like most intense thing that we saw. Oh, no, there's a giant calamity bear. Two red, red giant berserker. Three, four. If a giant source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double that damage instead to that permanent player. Uh, so that that crush underfoot card that I was mentioning in the pre-show two mana instant uh, that doubles the damage, right? Because it's a giant spell. It's tribal. Yep. Yes, it is. It does count. It's kind of it sweet. It does count. It's <laughs> sweet. Um, but yeah, that's 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 um, those are those are the leaks. Now uh, Monday night streams are at seven thirty PST. Uh, always on Twitch. So twitch.tv slash Kess Wiley, um, which is also me on Twitter and Instagram and everywhere else. But also, um, if you we're trying to get it on YouTube as well, we're just having a little bit issue of double streaming. Uh, it's not always successful, but when it is, it'll live on the channel. So definitely check out. Uh, the stream on Mondays on Twitch. It's a blast. Um, and a uh, big thank you to Nick Prince and Lady Danger last week who were on. And we played some awesome games. Um, and Super fun. yeah, that's everything I got. Uh, thank you, Marshall, who's just killing the game every day like a boss. Crushing it. Crushing it like a boss. All right. Thank you. This has been a production of Time Traveler Media. Sending podcasts into the future.